The first Huss Rainbow debuted in 1982 on the German fair circuit with Showman Dena. The support and arm structure are very similar to Huss's Ranger, which debuted two years prior. The Rainbow reaches a maximum height of about 26.5 meters or 87 feet. The capacity is 36 riders per cycle. The riders are seated on three rows facing forward with each seat offering space for two riders. The original seats are completely flat. If you ride alone, you slide from one side to the other. The gondola is about 10 meters or 33 feet wide and stays horizontal during the complete cycle, making for a more family-friendly ride experience than the Ranger. The Rainbow was available as a transportable and permanent ride. Different theming options, mainly for the permanent version, were also advertised by Huss, such as Mexican and Western theme. Most Rainbows were made with the Rainbow theme and name. Another seating arrangement was also available, where there are eight rows facing to the middle of the gondola, using restraints similar to those on a Huss pirate ship. Only one of these was produced. The Rainbow was visible on Huss's website until 2006, when the company went bankrupt and was turned into Huss Park Attractions. It is said that the last Rainbow left the factory in 2000, and that Huss produced 42 Rainbows in total. However, we could not verify this number with a reliable source, so take that number with a grain of salt. There are currently at least 11 rainbows left operating, with two of them traveling. In July 2008, a Huss rainbow operating at Liseberg in Sweden had an accident. The gondola suddenly tilted, injuring the riders. Due to this incident, multiple Huss rainbows were removed. Another reason why so few Huss rainbows are left is that the current Huss Park Attractions is not servicing this ride model anymore, much like many older Huss models. If you'd like to learn more about that accident, just let me know in the comments and there may be a future what really happened. A ride that is often confused with the Huss Rainbow is Webes Tausend und eine Nacht. This ride debuted in 1983, also in the German fair circuit, one year after the Huss Rainbow. This ride was built as a competition to Huss's Rainbow. Funnily enough, Weber was also located in the same city as Huss, Bremen in Germany. 1098 is basically the exact same concept as a Huss Rainbow, but with a different name and theme. The ride uses a very similar support and arm structure to the Rainbow, but the gondola differs from most Rainbows. They have 8 rows of seats facing the middle, seating 40 riders per cycle. The restraint also looks very different from those you would find on a Huss. Instead of a bar that only locks in one point, the Weber Tanzlundeine Nacht has an individually locking lap bar. The reason why the ride is similar to the Huss Rainbow is rumored to be that some employees who left Huss joined Weber and helped to design the Traumboot and the Tanzlundeine Nacht rides. The Weber company already went bankrupt in 1985. After this bankruptcy, Huss bought the rides to the Traumboot and the Tanzlundeine Nacht rides. They unfortunately never did a lot with those rides. The only things that they are said to have done with the rides is the installment of an unfinished Weber 1009 Nacht in Denmark in 1987, and they used some of the 1009 Nacht decorations for a rainbow ride called Aladdin. Despite the fact that Weber only built the 1009 Nacht for two years, about 15 units left the factory. Unfortunately, however, the Weber 1009 Nacht is an extremely rare ride today. I could only find two of them left operating currently, one in Parque Guanabara in Brazil, and one traveling in Germany with Schumann Hartmann. There are a lot of other rides similar to Huss's Rainbow, such as the ARM rides Rockstar, which could be covered in a future Flat Ride of the Week if there's enough interest. Alright, so moving on to discussing the ride experience. I have experienced some rides that are similar to the Huss Rainbow, however I've never ridden an actual rainbow. I've ridden some of the ARM variations on it though. Alex on the other hand has been able to experience a couple Huss Rainbows and he's going to talk about his experience on them now. So last summer I was lucky enough to cross the three Huss Rainbows uh, that are in France. I did them in less than a week time and I was extremely happy to be able to do that because they are really, really rare, especially here in Europe. Now, just France happens to have three of them. 
two of them are stationary and one is traveling however it only does one fare a year and I wanted to do it for such a long time and I am extremely happy to have finally done it. The ride experience is super fun, it was not deceiving at all, like it has some kind of weightlessness that you can find on many other rides and if you do find it they are not always as comfortable. Like, on some trip rides, you have some kind of weightlessness, but you get out with bruises. On the rainbow, however, I felt extremely comfortable, even though when riding alone I was sliding from one side of the seat to the other side, it was still comfortable because the sides were like padded. And yes, it's just such a beautiful ride, it's really impressive. I can imagine in 1982 it must have been extremely impressive to see such a huge ride on the fair skyline and the decorations on most of them are so beautiful as well I absolutely love the Sun in the middle and the backdrop of them is mostly well done as well for example the one which was in Paris last summer has a hand-painted backdrop by legendary artist Courtois. It is absolutely beautiful and it's a shame that there is not that many of them left operating. Yeah, so that about covers everything we have to say about the Huss Rainbow. Don't forget to head over to the channel community page to vote for what ride you'd like to see on Flat Ride of the Week next. We hope you enjoyed the first episode of Flat Ride of the Week Season 3 and we'll see you next week.